catch flies. What? What did I do? Your mouth's hanging down to your chest, girl. Stop dreaming. Think what you're meant to be doing. I'm doing it. If you think that's washing up, then I'm happy Fanny Field. Oh, Mrs. You'll not see your bed tonight, my girl. I'm warning you. I do them once more so. And you'll do them properly. And you'll do them properly. I wish I wish I wish in vain. I wish I were unmade again. What do you wish you were then, little bird? Queen of England? Unmade again. <laughs> Emily, look at this. Here she is, Mrs. Van Grandbottom herself. Edward, <laughs> you've no respect. Oh, I could buy and sell the lot of you. And what do you think of me spanking new carriage then, eh? Oh, she oh. must be awful rich. And my lovely new footman on the box. Oh, to have a carriage the like of that. You seen him? I never set eyes on him before. Now, why can't Lady Marjorie get someone like that for us? Because you've got adorable little me, that's why. Oh, and would you look at those feathers? They must be twice the length of my arm. You don't measure a lady by the length of her feathers, Emily. Oh, I'll say she is a dress for as many days as there are in a year. Now that, Emily, that lady that you see up there is what we call Novu, <laughs> which is probably new to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Edward. My lady should be ringing for tea in a minute, and you've no time to laugh she, about. Her and her charitable get-together. She can't stand the sight of the people there. You've no place passing remarks like that. A scamper through the woods. Certainly. Teach them to appreciate nature and give them some simply splendid exercise. Exercise? Exercise? They get enough of that running up and down stairs all day. Prudence, if I understand you correctly, you're suggesting that we hire some sort of omnibus, cram all our servants into it and dispatch them to Hampstead Heath. For a picnic with delicious cream buns and lemonade. Thus obeying our beloved Queen Alexandra's instructions to care more for the welfare of our domestic employees. Yes, I see the merit of that. They don't get enough fresh air. Fresh air? Simply frightful for the complexion. Yes, of course, it's Lady Templeton. But it's all in a good cause. These girls never get out. I think it's a splendid idea. We can all share the cost of the omnibus and each contribute a hamper of refreshments. Good. That's settled. Queen doesn't know what she started. <sighs> well, now we can all have tea. Well, not quite yet. We still lack one member of our committee. We need her vote. And her money. Uh, Mrs. Van Gruben, my lady. Good afternoon, Mrs. Van Gruben. Good afternoon. Now then, I believe that you have already met Lady Templeton. Yes, we have met, haven't we? Ghastly feathers. And Lady Prudence Fairfax, our force motif. How do you do? How do you do? Very bad for my chest. I've heard so much about you from my daughter, Wilhelmina, who is such a great, great friend of your daughter, Agatha. Oh, yes, I believe they met for the first time last night. <laughs> It seems young people become great, great friends at alarming speed these days. <laughs> I am late, and I do apologise, but it takes so long to get anywhere in London. Oh, I know, and it's becoming far too noisy and dirty in the streets. They really shouldn't allow so much traffic in the heart of the city. Oh, in my opinion, we're all being slowly poisoned by the fumes from those dreadful motor cars. Including yours, Prudence, darling. And yours, my dear Margaret. I won't allow my husband to buy one. We so much prefer the carriage and pair. So much more elegant. Of course, back in our wonderful country, we have so much space and freedom. Freedom to move around at one's leisure. Our life is much different in South Africa. She should have stayed there. The foreigners, they really are too absurd. Uh, Marjorie, do ring for tea, now we're all here. Prudence, will you explain your idea to Mrs. Van Groben? Such a splendid scheme for a picnic in the woods. To put some colour into their cheeks. In keeping with the Queen's wishes. Oh, quite. How like our dear Queen to concern herself with such matters. Now, the last cook we impulse... Hudson, you can bring tea now. And ask Mrs. Van Groben's coachman to have tea in the servants' hall, which will be some time. Very good, my lady. I'm so sorry. You were saying... Well, our last cook, she had a cousin who worked in the royal household, and she was most interesting about conditions there. Most interesting. It appears that on at least one occasion during her employment at the palace, Her Majesty actually paid a lengthy visit to the kitchen and the servants' quarters and actually spoke to the staff. 
Well, any room. My little niece were there, and when downpour started, they all got under table. <laughs> then Bishop of London arrives to read message from Queen. I hope you're all enjoying yourself, he reads, enjoying your tea party. <laughs> And all girls are still under table. Oh, I didn't get a week's wages to see 200 servants go hiding under the table in Regent's Park. They must take us for some kind of fools, you know. Oh, no, he mustn't laugh, really, Mr Harris. <laughs> it's very kind of Her Majesty. After all, she needn't have bothered. Ah, just a pat in the head, lass. Pat in the head. <laughs> Nothing changes, it? Any row, let, let me finish story. I'm uh, sorry I can't be with you. Reads Bishop with rain dripping from his hat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you're all having a grand time with love and kisses from Queen. <laughs> uh, and then, just as he's calling for three rails and cheers, down great banner which said, uh, God bless our gracious Queen, the giver of the feast, fell about his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his Grace the Duke of Poolborough would never have concerned himself with such a bad demand. He knew how to treat his servants proper, and we were right proud to be in his household. <laughs> he had no time for the patch of arms. <laughs> then round them up into the omnibus and home, in time to run our baths and lay the table for dinner. Splendid. Well, I certainly feel I owe it to my servants. A token of appreciation, really. People in our position must realise their responsibilities. To return to more mundane matters, have you any idea, Prudence, how much such an outing will cost? Well, I have it on the best information. It need not cost more than sixpence a head. Sixpence? What do you mean to feed them on? Bread and lard and a cup of cold tea? Ah, there'll be the omnibus to pay for as well, Lady Tarleton. Uh, I do hope we're not going to spend the entire afternoon haggling over money. I mean, what's a few pounds here or there? A great deal to some of us. Uh, what about numbers? How many will there be? Sixteen altogether, Marjorie. Uh, that's including Mrs. Van Groben's household. Well, I shall send my two housemaids, my kitchen maid, and tailor my pantry boy. Let me know how much I should contribute. Marjorie, my pet, I've decided to leave. I am quite ancient and inclined to be easily bored. I cannot afford to be bored at my age. Hudson, Lady Templeton is leaving. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Can't stand being cooped up with a herd of women, Hudson. Sure you feel the same. <laughs> Wonderful lady. <laughs> Such a rich character. <laughs> Most interesting. Some people find her eccentric, but Richard says she's the sanest person he knows. So it's all agreed then. A picnic, a nature ramble over Hampstead Heath, followed by a good tea in the church hall. Splendid. Well, your cause certainly has my support. Oh, I'm so glad. How kind you are, Mrs. Van Groben. No, no, it's you who are kind, Lady Prudence. Spending so much of your time improving the lot of these people who are really already so well cared for. And uh, who have so very little to do. Butcher boy, I love so well. He carted me my life away, but now with me he will not stay. I wish my baby it were born, and then let on. Haven't you done yet, Emily? I'm not used to ingrates. I showed you how yesterday. I'm doing my best, Rose. Uh, when's the new housemaid coming? I don't know. And back up. Mrs Bridges wants you back in the kitchen. I can't be in two places at once. Oh, well, you must try. And we're all tired. <clears throat> oh, good heavens.
bitches. Good morning, Emily, my dear. Good morning. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. By the way, Emily, I've got a little treat for you. Seeing as how you like my cooking and all. Come in here and have a taste of this lovely pudding I made. Oh, I've taken such a lot of trouble over it. Stirring it over the hot water for hours. Now then, you just taste it. Go on, girl, taste it. What's the matter? Don't you like it, then? Uh, please, Mrs Bridges, what in heaven have I done? I'll show you what you've done, little girl. You put salt into the sugar jar, that's what you've done. Oh, no, I never, that was never what I oh, did. Oh, that worked for nothing. I never did My that. lovely pudding ruin. Oh, I was never near it, Mrs Bridges. I'd not so much as dare touch your cooking things and please your heart for me. I'll hurt you all right, my girl. That's what comes of staring out of the window all day long. Daydreaming, looking at the carriages. But I'm sorry if I did mix up the jar, Mrs. Bridges. Maybe I wasn't thinking. Well, then you get on with that washing up. And then you can come in here and scrub my kitchen floor. Oh, Mother of God, please help me. I didn't never even finish the housework. There is one point, Lady Marjorie, that I hesitated to mention at our last meeting. I do hope there is some way we can ensure that no undeserving girls receive the benefit of our charity. Undeserving? After all, you and I have a position in society to maintain. A position which many people admire and even envy. I should hate to think we could be duped. I don't quite understand what you mean by duped. Well, if we were expected to include in these outings some of the riffraff that one finds in the suburban houses of the professional classes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I... I think I do, Mrs. Van Groven. But surely our intention is to benefit all those in domestic service, not just a privileged few. Oh dear. Looks as if we're in for a summer storm. Come on, Emily. You've done nothing but dream all day. It was only having a look at him. Oh. The boy in the court of Mr. Harris. Oh, Mrs. Van Groben's little flunky. Well, you can stop dreaming or you'll get into more trouble than from me this time. I've had to chase after you since first thing this morning. The beds weren't properly made. Mr. Bellamy's shaving water cold and now the lunch it ain't done. I can't manage it all, Rose. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Not with Mrs. Bridges getting at me an arm. I never touch your cooking things, Rose. Honest dangerous and never. We'll just have to learn to put up with it, that's all. Well, I think she has me in this favour. Look, she don't really mean all she says, Emily. And she's very fond of you, really. It's just that... Well, hurry up! I want you to help her with a sewing. Ah, uh, the poor lad. He'll get soaked through sitting out there. We hardly ever have to endure this kind of weather in Cape Town. I'm afraid it's this kind of weather that's making the rest of our committee so late. Lady Templeton has quite a way to come. Um, oh, dear. Your young footman's getting very wet. Yes, it really is too bad, but he's used to it. We were at the most wonderful house party at Lord Nicholson's only last weekend. We must bring him in and give him some tea. I'll ring for Hudson. What was it you were going to say about Toby Nicholson? Oh, come along in and sit yourselves down. Rose, take his cup. Oh, dear, dear. This is William, everybody. Uh, William, this is Mrs. Bridges. How'd you do? I expect you'd like a nice cup of tea and a slice of cake. Thank you. And that's Edward. Uh, oh, here, Rose, have you caught that uniform? I didn't know the household cavalry had gone into service. That's is Rose. That hey, well, don't you? You look oh, nice. Nice. Uh, and this is young Emily. Now, uh, where was I? Uh, the, uh, the Duke had just bought the motor oh, carriage. Ah, that's sweet, lad. Well, uh, his grace was never one to be behind the times. He believed in progress, uh, of the right sort. And he said he thought there was a great future for the motor carriage. Ooh, yeah. The present employer seems to have different notions, Mr. Ah, Harris. <laughs> he's a different <laughs> sort of person altogether, Mr. Bridges. Well, she's only just arrived, the nose. Uh, doesn't quite see what's what yet. Mm -hmm. Mind you... Uh, Mind you what, Mr. Harris? Well, uh, 
where there's brass, there's a mouth. <laughs> and there's uh, plenty of brass, isn't there, Mr. Harris? <laughs> <laughs> they don't say, lad, they don't say. <laughs> you not hear her sitting down quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Any road, it. Pour me some more tea, please, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, and now, yeah. don't you go starting in, young Edward. We're all just one big happy family in Wigmore Street. Aye, right, just one big happy family. Right, William? <laughs> William? Whoever it is, wherever they may be, I have a friend, Becky. Someone is my friend. It cannot be denied that as they sat before the blazing fire and ate the nourishing, comfortable food, they felt a kind of rapturous awe and looked into each other's eyes with something like doubt. Do you think, Becky faltered once in a whisper, do you think it could melt away, miss? Hadn't we better be quick? And she hastily crammed her sandwich into her mouth. If it were only a dream, kitchen manners could be overlooked. <laughs> no, it won't melt away, said Sarah. I'm eating this muffin. I can taste it. One never really eats things in dreams. One only thinks one's going to eat them. Besides, I keep giving myself pinches. <laughs> and I touched a hot piece of coal just now on purpose. <laughs> To be continued next week. You've awful good luck, William. Yeah, I suppose I have. Being able to do both the reading and the writing. I can't manage the writing at all, and it's a terrible disadvantage. Now, if my daddy could have read and written, I don't know what he couldn't have done. But what did he do? Your pa? He went and died, and that's what he did. Well, how did he die? He died from living. That's how he died. But my brother Phelan, he can read now. He can both read and write. I had a letter from him only last year in America. And he wrote he had the greatest opportunity. For when he was emigrating on the boat, he met up with this English gentleman who had all his wits about him. Or at least he knew it was three hours. And he taught them to fail him. Oh, so now they're doing grand with an entire business of their very own. Now, if my daddy could have read, he'd hardly be facing the sea now. <laughs> I can't understand half of what you say, Emily. Well, what can't you follow? Well, facing the sea? How can your dad be facing the sea if he's dead? In our village, we're always buried standing up. Standing up? Why? But why else? There's a grand view. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here you are, me loves, and some of your favourite cakes. But come on now, you two, you get tuck in. My Jack's going to be home in half an hour, you know, and he's going to be wanting his tea. And you know what a one he is for leaving his smile at the gate. I never noticed how late it was, but with William reading me the story. Yeah. Oh, look, you're going to let your tea get cold. I'll get you some more hot water. No, honestly, Mrs. Fellows, there's no need to bother. We're quite happy. Well, that's the main thing, ain't it? But I'll get you some more water anyway. You never know. Come on now, Emily. We can't have all that business again. I can't send all those blooming cakes across to your starving relatives. It's you I'm taking out to tea. Oh, I should have said we are the lucky ones. Lucky? What's lucky? I do my job well. I please Mrs Van Groben. She likes the way I look. Well, where's the luck in that? The luck is it was you she took from the orphanage. The bad luck would have been if she had not. And the luck it was that I got this job. Was it herself taught you all the reading? No, the orphanage. Mind you, she's teaching me lots of other things. Things she thinks I ought to know. How to get on, how to behave. She's a proper lady. They say she thinks the world of you. I do my job. She says I'll get on. She's a good mistress. Go on, Em. Have a cake. I'll have a cake if you read me again. The last bit of the story. All right. The bit where she pinches herself to understand that it's real. That it won't melt away. Oh, I'll not let you melt away, I'll not. Oh, but I'm in the trouble with servants. They don't know their own minds. I've 
tried to suggest things. I'm sure they're duly grateful. I mean, I said to my maid Smith the other day, what do you actually do on your day off? And do you know what she told me, what she does? She told me she sleeps the whole day. I said, don't just sleep your life away, Smith. Do something constructive. Read, think. Oh, she says, I tried that, madam. It wasn't no good. I couldn't think of anything to think about. I mean to say. She means to say, she means to say what? I was led to believe that this committee was called to give these girls some outlet, rather than turn them into third-rate philosophers. Lady Templeton, our aim today is simply to finalise the arrangements for the servants' outing. It seems to me that a month tomorrow would be the best date. The weather should be fine by then, and we won't clash with Ascot Week. Is that generally agreeable? Then, Prudence, you can finalise the arrangements with the vicar as to the use of the church hall. Splendid. Oh, it'll do them all a world of good. If it's of any interest, I intend to hold a masked ball during the season in aid of our worthy cause. The theme will be Versailles before the revolution. I do hope you will all accept my invitation to take tickets. Tickets? For the guillotine? That's a splendid idea, Mrs. Van Groven. How clever you are. Oh, thank you, Lady Prudence. Don't you agree, Marjorie? Aren't we going to have any tea today? Yes, at four o'clock. I shall have to give a ball this year, too, for my worthy cause. What's that, Lady Prudence? My daughter, Agatha. Shall we be expected to take tickets for that, too? You're not going to sell Agatha in a raffle, are you? Maybe one's last resort. <clears throat> I do hope that we're not going to lose sight of our original objective, namely the welfare of these girls. Well, they can all come along to Mrs. Van... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Pre-Revolution Ball. After all, someone will have to clear up the mess. All those decapitated trunks. You sound as though you disapprove of my idea, Lady Temple. I do. It might give the servants ideas. Marjorie, do ring for tea. I've made myself feel quite ill. Emily. Emily. That's hardly a name for an Irish girl. It isn't my name, that's why. Oh, you're called Emily. Oh, I am now. But my real name's Eving. But over here they find it hard to get their tongues round it. Even? <laughs> no, William. Eving. She was a queen, you know. Queen of Caraglith. My dad had told me she appeared to King Brian the night before the great battle, the Battle of Clontarf. And didn't she tell him the outcome of it all? Well, I haven't heard of a king called Brian. She told him that he would win the battle, but lose his own life. She was a spirit of sorrow. Was he an Irish king? He was. <laughs> Didn't know you had kings in Ireland. <laughs> and William, I'm sure you hardly know a thing. You never even knew you were to meet me. Meet you? That it was destined. Preordained. Oh, I was always certain of meeting you. I saw you that day in the kitchen and I knew I knew you. You're more to me than my love, William. You're my need. My very self. Look, Emily, I mean... And William, everything I do, I do for you. Everything I have to do in the house, I imagine I do it for you. Each floor that I scrub and fire that I lay and spoon that I polish is yours. Oh, I have you imagined all day. If it wasn't for Mrs Van Groben, I'd run off with you tomorrow. Asher, where would we run to? The world is full of running people. Maybe you could get another job. You can read and write and you're strong. If she even knew I was going out with you, Em. Do you love me, William? You know I do. I think you're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. But do you have a passion for me? Or do you just think I'm the prettiest girl you've ever seen? Yes. I love you, Emily. I have a passion, William. Oh, passion for you. And I never thought I would ever know anything as fine as this passion I have for you. There was nothing in my life before you, William, really nothing. And now it hurts me because it's so fierce. We'll be all right, Em. I'll look after you. How? How will you do it? And what can we do, Willie? You sure there's no place for us? You're a sad little thing sometimes, Emily. Wouldn't you be? I've nothing in this world. 
Do you? Mam is dying. Phelim is in America. My other brother Dermot, he got killed in the Boer War. And my dad is dead this two years now. So there's precious little to be left in the slate. Come on now, Emily. This is our day off. We should be having fun. What'll I do if she finds out? What'll I do if she takes you away from me? I'll you? never let her do that, Em. Never. Can I put my arm around you? Can I comfort you? You mustn't get so upset. Oh, will you? Can I kiss you? Let me kiss you, please, Emily. Oh, we shouldn't. I want to kiss you, Emily. Oh, no. No, we shouldn't do it. It's wrong. Oh, but I have such a passion for you. Well, now, isn't that lovely? Now then, you two, move along there. Wait past your bed, Jane. Box closing in three minutes. Move along. And every word she dropped a tear. And every line cried, Willie dear. Oh, what a foolish girl was I. I mean, William, you're only a boy. You're still very young. Now, I'm not angry with you, so don't be afraid. No, Mrs. Van Gogh. What I have to tell you is for your own good. We have a saying in our country that the first seedling of spring does not always lead to the best tree, you see? I mean, these things seem terribly important at the time, William, but most of them don't even grow into saplings. There are far more important things at the moment. Much more important things than a kiss and a cuddle with some little scullery maid. I mean, William, you're really going to be someone. You really want to be someone, don't you? And people who are going to be really someone don't have to meddle with little scullery maids now, do they? Come over here a minute. Come closer to me. That uniform of yours looks quite warm. Yes, madam. Yes. The sleeves, the cuffs, they're quite frayed. I think a brand new uniform would be the order of the day. And as you're such a smart boy, we'll have one made specially for you. Thank you, madam. <laughs> you can help me choose the materials and the color. Wouldn't that be nice? Very nice, madam. And now that Harris is getting on a bit and he can't do as much as he'd like to do, I think the person who's going to help him out more and take on more responsibility should have a really nice new uniform. Don't you, William? If you think so, madam. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yes, that other business. No, no, I don't think there's any need to talk about that anymore, is there? I mean, it doesn't really amount to anything now, does it? No, nothing, madam. It's only a bit of fun. Emily is here, my lady. Oh, send her in, will you, Hudson? Very good, my lady. Come in, Emily. Come over here. I want to talk to you. Emily, I understand that you have become friendly with a member of Mrs. Van Groben's staff, her footman, William. It's only fair to tell you that Mrs. Van Groben has forbidden William to see you. And I'm afraid you must respect her wishes and not try to see him anymore. Well, that'll be all. You can go now. Emily, it's not usual for me to concern myself in matters such as this, but you must understand, Mrs. Van Groven will dismiss William if he continues to see you. A boy like that with no references would find things very difficult. Oh, you're both so young. You've your whole lives ahead of you. Yes, my lady. 
It will pass, Emily. This hurt your feeling now. Truly it will. You'll learn to put it out of your mind. And when you marry, it'll be to someone you respect and who'll be your companion. A passion spends itself very quickly. Believe me. Well, you're very young. You've all your life ahead of you. Nothing will ever be the same. Well, what do you want me to write, Emily? Oh, Mother of God, I can never think in letters. I have no mind for the written word, Rose. Poor William. Dear William. It has to be dear William in a letter. Dear William. I am lost with hope. Oh, I can't think, Rose. There's nothing in my head. Dear William, we have been forbidden to see each other, but I still love you and think of you every day. How about that, Em? That's a good start. If you love me... No, Rose, just write these words. You are all that's left on the slate. Say you love me. Evie. What's that? Is that your name? How'd you spell it? I don't know. You better put Emily so. I just want to know he's there. She went upstairs to go to bed, and calling to her, Mama said, Give me a chair till I sit down, and a pen and ink while I. He won't turn up now, you know. They never do. And all the same, every man jack of them. <laughs> Did you think your William was going to be any different? Oh, no, girl, don't wipe round the legs. Smooth the things proper. Uh, I don't know. Your work seems to be getting worse and worse every day. Not that there was ever much to write home about. Now, you've missed a bit there by the table leg, a bit of grease. There, right under your nose. Miss Harris was telling me one or two things about young Master William. Oh, proper little household pet it is, it seems. <laughs> and that's for sure. Mrs. Van Groben, she buys all his clothes and dresses him up all by herself. Oh, unhealthy, I call it. Unhealthy. Oh, get on with your scrubbing, Emily. You've still got all that washing up to do. Still no sign of your fancy boy? Oh. They're all the same, every man jack of them. They're only wanting one thing. They're wanting to tamper with you. That's what they're wanting to do. But you wasn't going to be like that, was you, Emily? You was going to get married, live happily ever after. And where was you going to go, Emily? Employers don't like it, you know, when their servants want to get married. And with no references, who's going to take a girl who can't do nothing right? Nothing! There's a girl here not long back, rushed off to get married, and they were so poor... Are you listening to me, Emily? They were so poor, she had to sell her hair. Yes? That's right. The very air of her head. And how much do you think she got for it? Eight shillings and sixpence. Eight shillings and sixpence for a lovely head of golden hair. Oh. oh, but you wouldn't do a foolish thing like that now, would you, Emily? I mean to say, he's not worth it. And from all I can hear from Mr. Harris, that boy's more interested in what Mrs. Van Groben has to offer. <laughs> Emily! Dear Emily, what's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing, Rose, nothing. Have you been getting at her again, Mrs. Bridges? Oh, 
was only telling her a few facts of life, bro. <laughs> and leave me be, that's all. Just leave me be. <laughs> Emily. Emily, child, I'm sorry. I only... Leave me be. <laughs> Have you still heard nothing? I only wanted to help. I only wanted to help her. I'm sure. <laughs> nothing, eh? Well, look, cheer up. You might even see him at the picnic tomorrow. Rose, it is. It is, Rose. It's the coach. He's on it. <laughs> William. <laughs> oh, William. Oh, and would you look at his gorgeous new uniform? <laughs> here, don't let him catch a golfing at you, girl. Bring it in here, lad. Oh, what's all this then? It's not my birthday. Uh, something for the outing tomorrow. Oh, good. Come here. Put it down here. That's yes, right. Let's see, see what we've got. Mrs. Van Grooven had it made up special. Oh, look at that. Oh, look. Oh, yes. yes. Lovely. Oh. Sandwiches. Big weird yeah. apples. A little oh. top, top eh, yeah. Rose? But we're carrying you home as usual. <laughs> These sandwiches are stale then. We've lovely. got to take the hamper back. Oh, good. I'll take it out to the yeah. side. Yeah. Look at these, Rose. Look at this, Mrs. B. Well, I just made all these like that. Send them back to the house now. No point in rushing out there, lass. Oh, there is so. I must No speak. point at all. Oh, Mr. Harris, please, sir. He's got a lot of big responsibilities, lass. He's taking a lot on himself. If you pardon me, sir, I do want to speak to him awful bad. And now listen to me, child. Ah, he, he, he's no time anymore. No time at all. Well, he said he hadn't even got time to read this. So under circumstances, he... You reckon it'd be fairer for thee to have it back? It's, it's my letter. It is unopened. Oh, well, he's big responsibilities, lass. He's not given time. Ah, now think on tomorrow. You'll have a grand day tomorrow. Think on that. I am. And every line cried, will he do? Oh, what a foolish girl was I To be led astray by a butcher by Now listen, if I use these ribbons and there's a couple of flowers over here. Put them on my hat. You won't know the difference between me and Mady Scott. What do you think, Mrs. Bridges? Oh, it'll suit you a treat, Rose. You'll be the belle of the picnic, all right. Why don't you change your mind and come, Mrs. Bridges? No. I'm too old to go larking about in the <laughs> woods. Besides, I've got a lot of work to do clearing up after Emily. I'll go on, Mrs. B. You come along too. You'd have a topping time. I've no doubt you'll enjoy yourself, Edward. You and all them females. <laughs> oh, well, Edward's going to have a bit of competition this time. Because there's Taylor, the pantry boy from Lady Templeton's, and Henry from Lady Prudence. He's the one I can tell you. Go on, Mrs. then. Richard I'll be a girl. Not. I might even fancy Henry. Don't, oh, please, Edward. All I need to swear, you can never know the difference. Oh, you... Edward, give me back my hat. You come and get it. You little... Please, Edward. No, please, give it back. Shh, Marty from Rose. Thinking about tomorrow, I am. Ha! Well, here you are then. You wear that. You'll look even lovelier in that. Well, you've got to look your best, you know. It's a big day in a girl's life. Out of the omnibus, Edward, and look sharp. Time you were off. Emily's saving me a place on top of the bus. Emily? 
She's not on the bus yet. Oh, well, where is she? Then? All go and find her quickly, Rose. Yes, Mr. Hudson. Oh, I better go out to the bus and pacify them. We could not have planned it better. God has certainly smiled on us to give us such a perfect day. They sound so happy and excited, like children going to the seaside. I'm only afraid they'll enjoy it too much. My constitution couldn't stand a regular nature ramble. <laughs> Won't it be fun to see their faces when we serve them tea? <laughs> I suppose it'll do us all a bit of good, don't you think? Hudson will let us know when they're ready to leave. Emily! Emily! Oh, my God, Emily! Anyone would think they were packing for the North Pole. I'm sure they'll be ready to leave soon. Ah, at last. May I speak to you privately, my lady? Yes, I think. Would you excuse me? I expect they've dropped all the lemonade all over the pavement, the silly creatures. I think perhaps we'd better go on with the picnic without us. What has happened? It's our kitchen maid. She's, she's had an accident. Ach, she. Hudson has gone out to explain to the other servants. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Hudson. What did the sergeant say, Mr. Hudson? What's going to happen to her? Up your end, Mr. Rowe. Oh, down oh, your end, Mr. Rowe. Oh, no, no disrespect intended, Miss. It's all been taken care of. Walk these little rooms. Yeah, that's right. Right, Mr. Lowe. Uh, yeah, all right. Take it easy, Mr. Lowe. Easy now. That's it. Steady now. Mr. Hudson, I wonder, would you mind taking a peep out of that window? See whether or not our van has returned, uh, if you would be so kind. Uh, be so kind. Yes. Uh, uh. I'm afraid not. Oh, dear. Uh, would there be any objection if we were to wait in there for a bit? Uh, it isn't done to be seen in the street. Not under such delicate circumstances. Right. Uh, please, Miss Wade. Thank you. Right hand. To you, Mr. Lowe. Let's sit steady. Uh, 
You need out of this. Oh, yes. Just bang it on the table. Yeah. Just it out. Yeah. Right. Would you care for a cup of tea while you're waiting? Oh, most kind. Most kind. Rose. Never a kind word for her. Oh. Don't take on so, Mrs. Bridges. She thought the world of you. <laughs> Did she? She had precious little cause to. <laughs> oh, God, forgive me. I could have helped her. I could have done something. <laughs> oh, thank you. Last cup of tea. Very nice. <laughs> she was Catholic, you know. Ah. In mortal sin, eh? God will forgive her. Where will they bury her? Not in consecrated ground, Mr. Hudson. No, no, of course not. Well, after the autopsy at the morgue, the doctors will decide. When they're done with her. Doctors? Well, they like to think she'll be benefiting mankind. Medical research, you see. I prefer some young and healthy. May the Lord have mercy on us all. She had so few things. But well, they were hers after all. He went upstairs and the door he broke. He found her hanging from a rope. He took his knife and he cut her down And in her pocket these words he found Oh, make my grave large, wide and deep Put a marble stone be me head and feet And in the 